Let's talk about being a, um, a discovery writer versus an outliner, okay? Discovery writers and outliners. Uh, this is kind of getting into the idea of, um, I'll preface this with the concept of, um, of lesson two I want to teach you today. Lesson one, this is about skill. Lesson two is, um, is about tools. Um, again, not the band. Um, I guess the band doesn't have an S. Uh, so that was kind of a lame pun. <laughs> You'll get used to those. It's okay. Um, tools. Different writers write differently. And aside from a few general principles, there is no one way you have to do this. Okay? Now, for the class, I'm going to put certain restrictions on you to try and force you to use certain tools to, uh, to see if they work for you. At the end of the class, you may very well decide that these tools don't work for you and discard them. By tools, I mean methods of writing. Um, has anyone ever had uh, a teacher um, or a book you've read on writing tell you that you, you have to have an outline? Occasionally, you'll get these. Um, has you ever read Bob 1 that says you can never have an outline? Um, I think On Writing by Stephen King says never to use one. Um, this is because people who write these books or who, um, who do these um, Sometimes they're great writers. On Writing by Stephen King is brilliant. It's wonderful. Um, and Stephen King's a great writer. However, he said, says don't use the writing group and he says don't really use an outline. Well, those are tools that he uses. Different writers are going to use different tools and there's no one way to write a book. And this is best manifest by um, the idea of discovery writers versus outliners because it's pretty stark. And I found over the years that a lot of people fall into one of these two camps, and they're kind of mutually exclusive. Um, the discovery writers, discovery writers are those writers who work best when they don't have a lot of structure. This means that um, if if they have if they're forced to, to write an outline ahead of time, what happens to discovery writers is that they tend to get bored with that book by the time they're done with the outline, because they feel like they've just already done it, and so they want to move on to something else. Or they feel like they're really constricted, and the characters have no life, because their lives are determined for them ahead of time. Um, George R. R. Martin is a discovery writer. Um, if you can't tell by how long it takes him to write books. Um, George R. R. Martin is a discovery writer. He calls, he uses the term gardener. Um, which is a great term for a discovery writer. <clears throat> discovery writers are those who tend to grow their story. Now, we're not talking about this um, muse mumbo jumbo over here. Um, discovered writers are those, they're still going to work on their stories every day. It's not going to be about inspiration as much as it, well, inspiration is important. Um, but inspiration, the real inspiration comes through lots of hard work and sweat, and then finally something clicks, if that makes sense. Inspiration is not staring at a wall until something clicks. Inspiration is sitting and working until something clicks. Um, and so discovery writers do work best without an outline. Okay? On the other side, we have what we call outliners. Um, George Martin again calls these architects, which is a wonderful term. Um, I don't know if I spelled that right. Um, this is why I have spell check for copy editors. Um, so outliners. Outliners are those who, if they sit down to write a book, and there's just an empty, open vastness in front of them, they have no idea where to go. And don't ever get going. Um, outliners work best when they know what their goal is. They say, oh, I am shooting for this specific type of story. And if I take this type of story and I break it down into its components, then I have this step, this step, and this step. And they essentially are building a, um, a story through the, the small pieces, the small steps. It's kind of the engineer way to write a book. Um, and outliners will therefore build an outline for themselves. An outline is not like it's heading one, subheading B, yada, yada. An outline is a sequence of events that you're using as a guide, a map to write your book. Okay? Um, architects tend to, um, tend to have pretty explosive endings that come together really well. If you think of books you've read that have really zinger endings, the authors were probably architects. Orson Scott Card is a famous architect, okay? Um, and he tends to do a lot of outlining for his books, spends months outlining, and then he says he sits down and writes the book in a couple of weeks because he's done so much pre-writing. Um, another friend of mine, um, Kevin Day Anderson, 
is a heavy outliner. In fact, he, um, the way he writes his books is he writes a very in-depth outline, almost as a story pro proposal or pitch. He did, he's, he's famous enough and um, has uh, you know, enough publishing history that he doesn't need to write proposals for his books. He can just say, hey, I want to write about this, and they'll let him, and they'll give him money. But instead, he does these big proposals because it helps him write the book. And then when he sits down to write his book, he like, takes each sentence in the proposal. It doesn't look like an outline. I've seen them. They're just like long... Um, you know, long proposals in prose form, but he takes each sentence and kind of expands that, and takes the next sentence and expands that, and turns it into a book that way. He's also famous for um, writing um, with uh, dictation. He actually goes out hiking, takes his, um, his headset, and dictates a scene, and then has um, someone transcribe it, and then he, um, he edits it on page. So, a lot of people tend to fall in one of these camps. Um, a lot of you will be in between, but um, you'd be surprised at how many people tend to fall into one of these camps. The thing about it is, you really don't know for sure which one of these are, or in which situations which of these will work better for you, until you try them both out. In this class, you can do one or the other, but if you're going to be an outliner, you've got one week to make your outline, and that should be enough. Okay? Let's talk about kind of the foibles and follies of these two types of writers. Um, discovery writers, this isn't 100%, but discovery writers tend to like to revise a lot. They like to get it just right before they move on. And so you'll find that discovery writers, what they'll do is they'll write a chapter and they'll be like, okay, that's pretty good. They'll do a couple drafts on it and then they'll write the next chapter and explore where their characters are going and they'll be like, oh, now I know better where my book is going. So they'll go back and they'll rewrite the first chapter a couple times, and then they'll rewrite the second chapter a couple times, and then they'll write the third chapter and be like, oh, I've discovered where my book's going now. And then they'll jump back and start over again with chapter one and do this over and over and over again. If any of you have written you know, chapter one of your book like 12 times, then this might be a problem you're following. You know, I see someone laughing that you did it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> then this might be your problem. Discovery writers generally need um, a kind of that kick to the head to keep going. They need to learn to just keep going because what a discovery guide writer is really doing is writing a really long outline for their book. And then when you start over after you finish it, <coughs> your revision will usually be pretty dramatic because then you'll know where your book's going and you'll be able to, to write it through and fix it really well. Um, so discovery writers need to keep going most of the time. Uh, the other thing discovery writers have a problem with is endings. Because they don't know where they're going, discovery writers tend to get to like the 90% mark of their book and then be like, all right, I guess it ends. Um, this works okay in literary fiction, where the I guess it ends ending is kind of like the, the main ending that people do, and then it ended. Um, but it doesn't work so well in popular fiction where people actually want, you know, resolution and these <laughs> sorts of things. And so, discovery writers need to learn how to write endings. And usually what they need to do is finish their book, give it to people, and brainstorm that ending so that when they do their second draft, they can point toward that ending more. I see you nodding a lot. Are you a discovery writer? Uh, I think I need mean, Yeah, more, more that way. way. Um, <laughs> on the other side, over here, outliners, Outliners have something we call world builder's disease a lot of times. Uh, world builder's disease is you love building a setting and tweaking it and coming up with the perfect world that you're going to write, and so you spend 20 years writing the perfect world and never actually get around to writing your book. Um, this is a big problem with, um, with architects. Another big problem with architects is that they tend to like rip through a first draft and be like, all right, that's okay, and then just throw it aside and start on something new. This is what I did. Yeah, that's why I wrote 13 books before I sold one. I finished one, I'm like, hey, that was fun, I'll do another one. And then immediately was more excited about the next project than this project. The I'm excited about the next thing um, tends to be a bit of an outliner architect thing, um, though it could fall into both. Um, the thing is, you'll probably have attributes of both of these, depending on what you're doing, and you'll probably use different aspects of these um, for different parts of your writing. Um, through my history as a writer, I've found that um, I can use both tools for different situations. I tend to architect my worlds and my settings and discover around my characters. Works very well for me. Helps me keep my characters uh, a little bit fresh, 
Um, now, it helps me keep them alive rather than feel like their life is written out of them, but it also lets me have exposed bendings. The uh, problem with doing this means that my characters have line item veto over the outline, and so I often have to stop, and because I'm an architect, I can't just let them run wild, as a lot of discovery writers would do. I have to stop and say, okay, they wouldn't do that. I have to rebuild my outline, and so I can have to go back to the outlining stage several times during the writing of a book, which can be kind of frustrating when you want to you know, just make any progress, and you're like, no, I, this character wouldn't do that. The person they've become, I have to rebuild my entire plot. Um, I've gotten good at doing that, but it, it has ruined books for me early on in my career, uh, once I didn't publish, or it made so, certain books take a lot longer because um, I didn't quite understand this process. But my children's books, I completely discovery right, just for a fun exercise. Um, if I try to do an epic fantasy that way, it's a disaster. But in 50,000 words, I can discover write a pretty decent book um, that comes out the way I want it to. I can't discovery write it over 100,000 words. And that's just what I've discovered about myself. Um, I need that goal and I need to have that outline in order to keep multiple plot threads together. So, yeah. So just for example, something like the Stormlight Archives, if you're yeah. talking about the 10 book series, you, have a, you kind of have your outline. I have an outline the whole series, yes. Cool. Um, now that outline for some parts of it is like a paragraph here and a paragraph there. You know, that page, this book is about this. Um, but I at least know where I'm going and things like that. And you will find that a lot of discovery writers do very well to have one point on their outline, which is it ends here. And when the discovery writers have that one point in the outline, then it can be really helpful for them to have that better ending and to keep their uh, book focused. And you'll find that architects do a little bit better when they let themselves discovery write a few things. They build themselves a framework, but then build in some wiggle room here and there um, that they learn themselves how to actually that wiggle room works for them. For me, it's the characters. For you, it might be something else. Um, and you'll find that that adds some spontaneity to your books. And these are different tools. And so the idea is, as writers, and in this class, my goal is going to be to try and give you a bunch of these tools. To explain the tools, to show what's useful about them, and what might be on problems with them, and let you kind of collect them in a toolbox for yourself, so that as you're writing, you can try them out and see if they work for you. If they don't, toss them aside. Um, writing groups are a tool. We will be using writing groups in this class. Um, for instance, um, a writing group can really make your book better, but some of you, it's just not going to be that useful. It's much more useful for architects than it, than it is for outliners generally. Our architects than for um, discovery writers generally. That's because discovery writers' books are unformed, and if they show unfinished writing to people, um, then they suffer sometimes from, gee, wouldn't it be cool syndrome, right? Uh, gee, wouldn't it be cool if your characters did this? And you're like, oh, that's so cool, I need to write that book instead. And then you add that into your book. And then someone says, oh, but wouldn't it be cool if you did this? And you're like, yes, it would be. And you add that into your book, and suddenly your book is like a schizophrenic hodgepodge where like <laughs> trying to you know, be like somehow a military science fiction paranormal romance at the same time. Um, and you're like, and I must have vampires. And <laughs> vampires are cool. And, they can't be like regular vampires, so they're going to drink antifreeze. They're far away. You know, it's like that, that can be really troubling um, for you.